Welcome back to Chaos Chem. Today I am going to show a simple method for obtaining anhydrous ethanol. Or if you don't need anhydrous ethanol, uh, you can simply just skip the last two steps and you will get 95% ethanol. Or that would be, uh, what, 100 and... Uh, see, 180, 190 proof. So, uh, the first thing that we need to do here, now, the uh, substance or the mixture that we are going to be obtaining our ethanol from is actually hand sanitizer. And I have found that in the U.S. at least, this is an excellent source of ethanol because pure ethanol is rather hard to come by. Um, there is always going to the state liquor store and buying some Everclear. Uh, but that is around $40 for a fifth of a gallon. And it is still only 95% ethanol. Um, and so then you still need to go through the drying steps to remove the excess water from it anyhow. And it's rather expensive. Uh, in this method I'm going to show you here, and I go to the dollar store to purchase this sanitizer, which is 70% by volume ethanol. Uh, I spend, you know, just $1, and it is, again, 70%, and there's 331 milliliters per bottle. So, uh, I've written it down here. This here, so I, I put 330 milliliters because when charging the reaction flask, there's a little bit of mechanical loss with um, the gel getting stuck to the funnel. And even though I pushed most of it down in that I could with a uh, glass rod, I just accounted for maybe a milliliter worth of loss. So at 70%, that means our theoretical yield, as you can see, is 231 milliliters. And that's a pretty good amount of ethanol for a dollar. So if you don't mind doing the work, this is a fantastic method. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get all of the ingredients and that are in the ethanol mixture, or the sanitizer mixture, as it were, and figure out the boiling points of each respectively and so I have that all figured out here already the only thing that I did not include and that is because uh, when I did this I um, was using a clear hand sanitizer however I could not find a big bottle of clear this time so there is a little bit of uh, blue and yellow dye in here which makes it green um, and I did look up the boiling points on those and they are extremely high so they're really irrelevant to what I'm going to be doing here and the uh, other thing that I did not include in this is the fragrance they add to it and there is no information available on that because it is a proprietary fragrance so disclaimer here guys and gals the ethanol that you will make from this, or extract from this, is going to smell good. However, this will not affect any reactions that you are going to be using the ethanol for, and uh, it will not affect anything if you are just using the ethanol as a solvent. Um, I have used it as both a reactant and as a solvent, and it has not caused any detriment whatsoever. So as you can see here, uh, the boiling point of ethanol, 78.37. These are all in Celsius, by the way. Uh, the only uh, real close thing that we have is the water, which boils at 100 C, of course. And everything else, the carbamore is 141. Propylene glycol boils at 182, or no, I'm sorry, 188.2. Um, so really the, the water is the only thing that we need to consider here. And um, 
even though the boiling point is uh, roughly 22 degrees higher, um, at 95% the alcohol uh, becomes azeotropic with the water. And so it will carry over some of the water anyhow, uh, which is why we need to do uh, two different drying steps in this process. So after you have uh, gotten all of the boiling points for everything and you see that really the only thing you have to worry about is the water coming over, we can move on to the next step. So the next step in this process is to charge your reaction vessel which is right here and you can see that I've already done so with our hand sanitizer and I'm just using a three necked flask because unfortunately my single neck flask just cracked the other day on me uh, from thermal shock and it actually wasn't anything that I did to it other than I removed it from the heat set it on a silicone trivet to cool and it just happened to be a very cold night and the ambient air temperature actually cracked it. So I was a little bit sad about that. I digress. So here's our setup. We've got our thermometer well with a thermometer in it. Just set up here for simple distillation. There is our Liebig condenser and I will hook up the water hoses to it. And for the collection flask, uh, I notice I don't even have a takeoff adapter on there. It's not necessary, really. I'm just using a tall form 500 milliliter beaker. So uh, after we get the, the reaction flask charged, um, you see I'm using a heating mantle. I have it on a lab jack. So once we get done boiling off all of the ethanol, we can remove the heat immediately. Uh, so the next step then is just to uh, hook up my water supply and start the distillation. So uh, I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I got my water turned on. And my water just happens to be a brown color. And that is simply because I uh, had a little bit of rust in the water. So obviously it doesn't look too pretty, but it's going to do the job. Now, I'm not using ice water for this, uh, or uh, actually I should say there's no ice in the water for this because this water is only 15 degrees C, just as it is. And again, our boiling point is less than 80 degrees C, so it's not going to get all that hot, and this is more than sufficient to cool it off. So, I'm going to turn our stirring on about halfway. And I'm going to turn the heat up on the full blast, at least until we get going. And then uh, all we do now is just wait. Now, once uh, the distillate starts coming over, I will definitely turn down the heat because we don't need it to be that high. But until then, I'm going to leave it on. And I will come back once we start to have distillate coming over. You can see here the distillation has started. We're getting distillate at a good clip. It has been coming over now for about five minutes. And you can see that we have probably collected about 80 to 90 milliliters so far. So it is going along very nicely. And we'll be back here as soon as the simple distillation is done. Okay, our simple distillation is done. That was step one. I've moved on to step two, and as you can see, I have set up for a fractal distillation. Same exact setup, except for uh, I implemented the fractionation column, or Vigro column, as it is properly called. Got our thermometer. Uh, sorry about the glare there. Got the thermometer there. And the uh, only other difference besides the Vigro column as I did put on a takeoff adapter now and I have a round bottom flask for our collection receiver and I just did that to try to mitigate our evaporation losses since um, we are trying to purify the ethanol now and so the uh, as you can see the thermometer is just right to the bottom of the still head and it is uh, 
roughly uh, 55 degrees Fahrenheit out here in my lab and so uh, with the cooling of the vapor as it travels up the distillation column the let's see here there it is so you can see that um, the vapor is actually cooling down to about uh, 78 degrees Celsius when it is coming over and uh, that is obviously um, lower than the boiling point of ethanol however we have to keep in mind that the thermometer is not down actually here in our solution um, if it were down there you'd be reading about 80 degrees um, but you know the vapor loses temperature as it climbs up this 300 millimeter uh, vigro column and so it's you know like I said it's about 78 degrees Celsius is where it's coming over at now um, I probably will stop the distillation at around 85 degrees Celsius uh, because once it climbs that high it's probably going to be distilling over just water uh, another good indication of this is that um, as we are watching our distillate come over you notice that as the drops are hitting what's in the receiver there is no uh, phase separating uh, whatsoever meaning that it is all the same density so right now I know that I am just uh, collecting 95 percent ethanol and that's it uh, so uh, say I reach 85 C what will probably be happening is as the drops hit the solution we'll start to see kind of a uh, not really a turbidity but you will see uh, kind of like it'll look like oil coming down into this and you will definitely be able to see that there is a different density fluid coming in there which will be the water and so once you start to see that if that does happen you want to definitely stop distillation remove your heat uh, if you cannot remove the flask from the heat immediately just hurry up and switch out your collection vessels so that you start collecting only the water um, but in my experience I'm able to stop it uh, right at the perfect time to where I only collect maybe a few drops of water and that is it and now we just have to wait for this to finish and once this is done we can move on to the third and final step of the extraction of anhydrous ethanol from hand sanitizer another note is that you can see this is what I collected from the hand sanitizer it's absolutely clear here was our original reaction flask and you can see that all of the dye has stayed in there so that proves to you that even though I did not include the boiling point of the dye on our boiling point sheet that it definitely has a very high boiling point and it just stays right in the polyethylene glycol in the carbomer and this is probably some tocopherol acetate in here too which was one of the ingredients so once uh, this is all done distilling I will come back and I will show you step three okay so for the third step here the third step can either be a single step process or I actually break it into a two-part process because it's a little bit more efficient so what I do is I transfer from the collection flask into an Erlenmeyer flask and that is because it gives us greater surface area on the bottom and I take what I have here in this cup it's kind of hard to see but what that is is that is anhydrous magnesium sulfate and uh, there's about 20 grams there and so what you want to do is pour that actually I'm gonna get a filter for this makes it a little bit easier here to 
don't want to spill it everywhere. So you just pour that right down into our ethanol, which again is at 95% currently. Tap that down in there. down in there with a rod okay so all the magnesium sulfate is in now that we got that in there what we want to do is grab a stir bar stick that in there come over to our stirring plate and transfer to a different stirring plate. I had that one broken apart and I think I forgot to put the fuse back into it. Oh, help if I turn the power on here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we're working. Okay, so what we want to do is we just want to let that stir for a little while. And that is going to absorb all the water, or at least a lot of the water out. And I always just take and loosely put a stopper on top of it like that. Now, you don't want to shove it down in there because you want to allow gases to escape. At the same time, though, you want to hinder the evaporation of the ethanol because it's a very volatile liquid. And while we are waiting for that to stir, and you know what? You can see down here on the bottom, some of those chunks of magnesium sulfate are not swirling around. There we go. So you want to turn up the stirring so you get it all turning around. So that all of the magnesium sulfate can work on all of the solution. So now that we got that under control, then what we want to do here is this is half a cup equivalent of molecular sieves. And before you use molecular sieves, you always, even though they look bone dry, you always want to dry them in an oven. And so I'm going to pop them into my toaster oven here. And I have this set for 225 Fahrenheit or about 107 degrees C. And we are going to heat that for 15 minutes or so. And that will drive off any water that has been absorbed into them while they have been just sitting even though they've been in a relatively airtight um, screw top jar which uh, you can see here this is what I keep them in um, you know there's still head space in the in the container so they can absorb some moisture so while we're waiting for the uh, sieves to dry we've got our magnesium sulfate working over here so, um, two things. One, if you do not have any molecular sieves, you can buy some. They are really cheap. I think I paid less than $15 for a couple pounds of them on Amazon. You want to get type 3A. And type 3A are a type of molecular sieve that selectively um, soaks up the water molecule without soaking up anything else so they are great great drying agents if you're just trying to dry water out of something which if you're trying to dry anything that's what you're trying to do um, on another note though if you don't have sieves and you don't want to buy them what we want to do is then just uh, do as we're doing here with the 20 grams or so of magnesium sulfate and let that stir around for about 15 to 20 minutes which is roughly the same amount of time that we're drying our sieves for 
And then, uh, so if you don't have the molecular sieves, what you want to do then is filter off uh, the magnesium sulfate from the alcohol. And you can do that uh, by any means of filtration that, that you feel um, works. I prefer gravity, or I'm sorry, I prefer uh, vacuum filtration because it is quicker. Therefore, it uh, allows less time for the alcohol to be in open contact with the air, uh, i.e. less time for it to evaporate. And uh, so anyhow, after you filter it and you get the magnesium sulfate out, what you want to do then is uh, pour your alcohol into, uh, just say, an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, you can use the same one that we're using here, since it already has a little bit of magnesium sulfate, like you can see a little bit of the powders up there in the neck. And then you want to add about twice of the magnesium sulfate that we have in there already. So um, we have got... Uh, 20 grams in there now, so you want to put in at least 40 grams of the magnesium sulfate and hydride and put the stopper in all the way and just let it sit. And uh, what you want to do then, you can see how there's a line over here on the side. That is from a, a previous drawing that I had done. So what you want to do uh, before you uh, uh, stopper it all up, once you get the magnesium sulfate in, draw a line right at the meniscus where your fluid is and give it a few days and just wait until you see the fluid level drop down anywhere between half an inch to an inch, all depending on how much water you have. And that tells you that the magnesium sulfate has sucked all the water out of your alcohol, leaving you with the anhydrous ethanol, which is what you want. Um, Another good indication that the magnesium sulfate has done its job is that it, it will no longer just be free floating around in there. It will have clumped up and when it is all clumped up that means that it has absorbed all the water that it can. And so uh, at that point you should have anhydrous ethanol. And then what you want to do is just uh, since you don't want to use one of your flasks for um, storage just transfer it into a good airtight bottle seal it up and uh, uh, let it you know just let it sit there um, you can also store it over some more anhydrous magnesium sulfate and that will just ensure that it stays dry that's how I store my ethanol any type of alcohol actually I store it over magnesium sulfate um, and that makes sure that, you know, any moisture that gets into the bottle, uh, any moisture that's in the air in the headspace of the bottle, um, that does not uh, go into solution with your alcohol. It just gets absorbed by the magnesium sulfate. Uh, if you do not have anhydrous magnesium sulfate, it's really easy to make. All you need to do is basically go to the store, get yourself a bag of Epsom salts, which is pure magnesium sulfate, but it is magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. And put it on a cookie sheet and stick it in the oven, just like we did with the molecular sieves. However, you are going to want to bake it at about 200 to 250 Fahrenheit. And leave it in there for 1 to 2 hours. And that time is all dependent on how much the magnesium sulfate you're going to dry. A good indication that it is done though is just listen carefully uh, and you will hear crackling which is the um, water basically uh, boiling and evaporating out of the magnesium sulfate once that crackling has stopped uh, it's all done and ready to go so just uh, store it in an airtight uh, container and it's ready to use and I will tell you that a uh, three pound bag of Epsom salts, if you dry the whole thing out, that will give you pretty much a lifetime supply of the anhydride. Uh, because the nice thing about it is that uh, once you absorb the water with it, which it can absorb, you know, seven water molecules per molecule of the sulfate and turn it back into the heptahydrate form, 
you can just stick it back in the oven and redry it and it's ready for use again so it's pretty much a, an everlasting drying agent so as we are waiting for our sieves here to dry I'm gonna cut the video and I will come back and show you what we need to do with the sieves alright our sieves are done drying so now we need to filter the magnesium sulfate out of our alcohol you can see here I just made a nice little fluted filter paper. And we're just going to slowly pour that through until it's all gone. While we're waiting on our filtering to get done, we can remove our sieves from the oven. And for ease of pouring them into the flask, we should transfer them into a measuring cup or something with a spout on it. Okay, so we've got them all transferred into our little measuring cup here with a spout. We'll make it easy to pour in. And as you can see, this filtration is taking some time. Still a good amount of liquid in there. And that is just because of all the fine particulates of magnesium sulfate that is in it. So I'm just going to move on to the next part of this and uh, show you what we do with the sieves here. Okay, so I got a cleaner Lemire flask here. And all we're going to do, I got a funnel on the top, is pour our sieves down into it. All right, and now that our sieves are in there, what we want to do is after our alcohol finishes filtering here, uh, what we're going to do is really simple. We just uh, take our alcohol and pour it into our flask here with the sieves on the bottom. And then what we do is the same thing as, as I talked about if you're just using magnesium sulfate to dry it. Once you get the ethanol in, take and draw a line where the meniscus is. And you just wait until it goes down and it does not go down any further. And at that point, you know that it is completely in hydrous ethanol. So then the... The very last part of this third step is to decant it. Uh, you can decant it directly off into your storage container, um, but I recommend doing it through a uh, funnel with a coffee filter in it. That way if any of the sieves come out, they get caught in that. And also what I usually do then is I take all of the sieves uh, that are still left in the bottom of this flask here and I put them into a Buchner funnel with no paper in it and I vacuum filter the sieves because uh, there's always a little bit of the ethanol that stays kind of stuck onto the sieves themselves and it's not much but we've gone through all this trouble to uh, dry it so we might as well collect the most yield that we can and so, uh, you know, you'll get, you know, maybe 10 more milliliters by uh, drying the sieves a little bit on the vacuum filter. And uh, this is taking so long to filter that I'm not actually going to show you that step, what it looks like. Um, but I'm sure you all can figure that part out. It's not really that complicated. The only other thing is when you are drying them in here... Uh, I recommend if you have a polypropylene stopper like this, just loosely set it on there again so that gases can escape but nothing can get in because when you drop uh, the alcohol onto these sieves here, when they start to work, they will let off a lot of gas, um, uh, which is some hydrogen that is being released, and so pressure will build up in this bottle um, I made the mistake the first time I used these of taking a stopper and pushing it in hard 
and it actually built up enough pressure that it blew the stopper out and it took me weeks to find it. Um, if you don't have a uh, polypropylene stopper like this, don't use a glass jointed stopper because if you just set them in there, they tend to want to make a seal as it is. Uh, in that case, I would just put a little bit of plastic wrap over the top of it and, you know, pull it semi-tight. And so there you have it, guys. That is how you uh, obtain anhydrous ethanol from hand sanitizer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.